The prairie dogs live in open spaces. Their burrows dug out underground are like real cities spreading across the plain. In Texas, at the beginning of the century, a study of one such burrow discovered that it covered more than 60,000 square kilometers and had 400 million inhabitants. Wherever they settle, they systematically destroy the prairie. Over time, the tall grass disappears and only the most resistant to grazing is left. This has two advantages for prairie dogs. Low grass is their favorite food, and low grass also enables them to spot coyotes with sufficient time to get away. The best times for the coyote began after the gray wolf was eradicated in 1930, but in 1995, the park was resettled with grey wolves and the coyote had to give up some of its territories to this more powerful competitor. One of the reasons which led to the reintroduction of the wolf was to control the population of North America's second biggest cervid, the wapiti, or elk. During the summer, there are herds of almost 30,000 elks, and this puts far too much pressure on their grazing areas. At this time of the year, they divide up according to sex and spread across the open prairies. Their antlers, which they had lost during the previous winter, will be ready again for the autumn, when the mating season begins. The wapitis are the most polygamous deer in America, and their harems may reach 60 females per male. The Rocky Mountain Mouflon is much rarer. There are only a few isolated groups in the highest peaks of the mountains. Only 150 of these animals live in Yellowstone. Their capacity for walking on rocks and their resistance to the cold allow them to inhabit the steep mountain peaks. Here there is no competition from the other large herbivores. They only share this area with their predators. Pumas, coyotes and eagles are all prepared to reach these heights to hunt them. The pronghorn, the fastest herbivore in America, lives in the open spaces. It can reach speeds of 80 kilometers an hour, and its heart is twice as big as would normally correspond to its weight. Its feet are similar to a giraffe's, and although it sheds its horns, it only loses the outer layer, which falls off when the new one grows beneath it. Its peculiarities do not end here. In order to adapt to temperature changes, they can vary the angle of their fur. When it is cold, their fur sticks close to their skin, and when it is hot, it sticks out, allowing air to circulate around the fur. Control over their fur has another important use. When they sense they are in danger, they stick out and flatten the white fur on their haunches intermittently. The change produced by the reflection of light can be seen four kilometers away, more than enough for the herd to reach safety. The pronghorns share the prairies with the legendary bison. Both species have different diets, so they do not need to compete and can live together in peace. In the past, millions of these colossal animals roamed North America in search of the best pastures. Today, their migrations are limited to the Yellowstone area. 
In the summer, they graze on the high plains and they come down to lower areas during the harsh winter. Males and females form separate groups and come together during the mating season in July and August. They can also be seen together in spring and autumn when they meet up in search for the best pastures.